The Apple Card gives you the ability to buy the latest Apple products and pay them off over two years and earn 3% cash back upfront with an installment plan. But it uses your available credit limit to finance the total amount. If we're talking about an iPhone Pro Max, then that's $1,200 charged to your Apple Card all at once. And that's a big problem because many people are starting with the Apple Card's lowest limit, which is $250. That's nowhere near enough to even begin an installment plan. And and there are others who may start with a $1,500 limit, which introduces a few different problems. It's enough to start the payment plan, but it uses most of your available credit limit, which does real damage to your credit score, lowers your chances for a credit limit increase, decreases your odds of approval for new cards, and you won't be able to buy any other new Apple products on installment plans until you pay down the initial installment. Your goal should be to have enough available credit to buy the Apple product that you want without using more than 30% of your credit limit. The amount of credit you utilize makes up 30% of your credit score. It's calculated using the total credit available across all of your cards. If this is your only credit card, then your credit score will be significantly damaged after buying that new iPhone. It could drop by 50 points or more depending on your credit history. To safely set up an installment plan for a $1,200 iPhone Pro Max and stay within the 30% rule, you would need a total credit limit above $4,000. Since you may not have a limit that high, you'll need to find a way to make up the difference and protect your score. In this video, I'll discuss five ways to buy that new iPhone and safeguard your credit score at the same time. First, you could save up money before your purchase or pay extra towards the iPhone payment plan balance over a short period of time. Three to six months would be a good target to shoot for. Once your credit uses returns to more acceptable levels, your credit report will reflect the improvements on a monthly basis. By using this method, you'll also be paying off your iPhone much faster, which eliminates the installment plan payments altogether. You could even set up auto pay for the installment plan payments plus the extra amount within the wallet app. You can decrease your spending on the card at least until the installment loan is almost finished. It can be helpful to stop using your Apple card and switch to a debit card or cash to make regular purchases. Otherwise, your new purchases will offset your payments by increasing your credit usage each month and your credit utilization rate won't go down as quickly. You can try setting your debit card as your default payment method within the wallet app to help out. If you still like to use the Apple card and earn cash back, then you can accomplish the same thing by decreasing the reporting of what you spend on your Apple card by paying the total balance before the billing cycle closes. The Apple card billing cycle is from the 1st to the 30th every month, so as long as you pay the balance balance of the card for the purchases you made throughout the month by the 30th in full, then it won't be reported to the credit bureaus. This way you still earn daily cash back that you can use to help pay your regular purchases without doing any extra damage to your score. You could try making payments weekly to stay on top of all your transactions. Next, if you qualify, you could try opening a whole new card. This will raise your overall credit limit, which will in turn instantly lower your utilization rate once you're approved. A good choice is the Discover it card. You can pre-qualify without hurting your credit score and it only requires a score in the low to mid 600s. Credit card issuers typically offer you a credit limit similar to accounts on your credit report. So let's say you have a $1,500 line with Apple. Then you should receive around the same with Discover. Now you'll be capable of earning more cash back since the it card earns 5% back in rotating categories, which will complement the Apple card's ability to earn 2% back at many other places. Plus, it comes with a first year bonus that doubles the cash back you receive for that year. If you're getting value from this, please hit the like and subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this one. Another approach is to just take the initial hit to your credit score in the short term. Your utilization rate not only has a high impact on your score, but it also affects it at a high speed. It typically takes 30 to 60 days to see your usage reflected in your credit score. You may be at a point in your life where you don't have any major your car or home purchases coming up so you can have a little patience. You should be able to get a credit limit increase in the near future. Many people have informed me that Apple will increase your limit after just 60 to 90 days of good performance. And in many cases, it happens automatically. Apple and their partner bank, Goldman Sachs, just need to establish a working relationship with you first. If things are taking too long and you don't see any movement after a few months, then you can manually request one from customer service. If you're 
interested in learning more about how to get a credit limit increase for your Apple card, like how to make a compelling case when talking to a representative, then check out this video next. Thank you for watching and you have a good one.